Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Charlotte, if you don't know who I am. I talk about mental health, uh, physical disabilities, chronic illnesses, and my life really. I am a single mum to an almost two year old and to a uh, almost three year old dog. She's there, she's called Dexter and she's batshit crazy. I haven't filmed a video in, or I haven't uploaded a video in over a year. Sorry about that. Creativity is always and has always been a big part of my life and I haven't had the time or energy to do anything creative, which leaves like a little hole in me. Creativity is a massive part of who I am and what I need to kind of be me. By creativity I do music and that sort of thing. I used to perform a lot, I can't now. So, the last year, I've got massive deja vu right now, it's really weird. I'm gonna kind of talk you through kind of in chronological order, kind of in chronological, kind of in chronicle, kind of in chronological order, what's been going on in the last year. I know people have questions about my mobility now and I'm gonna go into that in this video um, to an extent. So I think I mentioned in my last video that I had broken up with my ex-partner and that happened Unofficially, it happened when Ed was about three weeks old, um, but officially, January 2019, uh, January the 4th, 2019 to be exact, I have talked about my ex-partner on this channel a little bit. You'll notice that at the beginning I talked about how happy I was and all of that. That kind of became less so as my videos went on, as time went on. Um, there is a reason for that. My ex-partner uh, was an addict, is an addict, and when we first met, he wasn't fulfilling his addiction, shall we say. Uh, a few months in, he started to again, and that's when our relationship changed. Uh, I didn't believe that I deserved any better than the way I was being treated. Um, there was a lot of mental and emotional abuse and manipulation going on. Um, then I fell pregnant and I didn't think I could do it on my own basically. So I was putting up with a lot. I was very, very unhappy, but I had, you know, a baby growing something, I wanted to be strong. I didn't, as I said, I didn't think I could do it on my own. And then when Edie was born, uh, around her birth, some things happened. Um, I was being treated in a way, like the day after Edie's birth, I was being treated in a way which was not okay. Um, I was being shouted at and screamed at and um, I don't want to go into it a lot because it's something that's still very raw for me. Lots happened that wasn't okay. And when Edie was three weeks old, I, we weren't living together, but we kind of were unofficially. Um, I kicked him out and um, then things got worse and worse. He was lying to me. And as the year went on, we saw him less and less. Um, and then when I moved, he's been, we saw him a few times, um, but things were really difficult. And I was trying to, in a nice way, break up with him and say, this isn't okay, I'm being treated appallingly, my daughter's being treated appallingly. So then January 2019, we broke up. There's been a lot going on since then to do with it that's um, been really difficult because obviously he's still um, fulfilling his addiction, shall we say. And uh, that doesn't make him safe to be around my daughter because he's doing that, he's not safe to be around my daughter because he's lying about it. He's not safe to be around my daughter. Um, because he can get very, he can get very aggressive, uh, which I encountered a lot. Um, and I am now dealing with, as I dealt with in our relationship, gaslighting from him um, and his family to an extent. What else was going on? So that was January. Um, so over the last year, I've spent the last year trying to get more help, some answers. Um, I have got some answers the last few weeks. I am awaiting further referrals. I was diagnosed with hypermobility, which isn't a massive surprise, and um, fibromyalgia. On top of, if you don't know already, I have um, peripheral, neuropathy, peripheral neuropathy due to my eating disorder, arthritis, sciatica. I have suffer from migraines um, as well. They're kind of the main things, uh, pain related conditions, a lot of pain related conditions. Um, in terms of my mobility, um, I have to use walking braces and I use crutches, a walking stick or a wheelchair to mobilise. Obviously having a baby, well she's a toddler now but she's my baby still, I can't use a wheelchair as much as I would need to so that means that I can't really, I don't get to go out big places 
unless I can use a wheelchair unless I've got someone with me. Um, so uh, when we're going out, I use crutches and a walking stick, but I can't really walk very far and it is incredibly painful. The last few days have been absolutely horrendous because my um, I have joints that dislocate. My hip dislocated a couple of weeks ago. Um, it does it every so often and it means that I've then got months of pain because it slips in and out of the joint. I am having some MRIs done to make sure there's nothing else going on. That's a brief summary of that. It's been getting slowly worse throughout the last year. I think I'm coming to the realisation, not realisation, I think I need to accept the fact that I have illnesses, I have disabilities and I need to keep my limitations in what they are because sometimes I do too much and I damage myself and I suffer for months afterwards and it then means that I can't do as much with Edie as I would have been doing if I hadn't hurt myself if that makes any sense. I dislocated my knee uh, this week for example which means that I'm in a lot of pain with my knee and it just it just hurts a lot really. Um, I'm in a lot of pain. I've spent five minutes and 13 seconds talking about the fact I'm in a crap ton of pain. Something that happened in June, I started to have a bit of a breakdown in June. Um, something triggered something off, I did something stupid. It triggered off a very low mood and um, a lot of struggling, more struggling with the mental stuff and that was very apparent when we went to Cornwall. I was struggling a lot with the self-image stuff. I remember the first day we got down there and I was in the hotel and I wanted to change my clothes because we've been driving all day and freshen up and I was like, holy shit. I looked in the mirror and, you know, I don't really have mirrors at home. I've got a mirror there on my dressing table, but like full length of mirrors I don't really have. Um, yeah, I struggled. And also because we were going for it to a wedding, I don't really do dressing up and looking nice and putting my makeup on and all of that because as you will know from some of my very first videos, that's something I struggle with because of the way I see myself and because of how I look. I should talk about Edie. A lot of what's been happening the last few months has been centred around Edie, which is partly why I'm struggling so much now, because I've um, been neglecting myself a little bit. Basically, the last few months I've had some concerns over Edie's uh, lack of walking, and some of, her, some of the things that she does were indicative of something called hip dysplasia. Long story short, it took a long time to get referred and checked. She doesn't have hip dysplasia. She has hypermobility, like me. Um, but they are concerned about uh, some things, so she's been referred to neurology to have everything checked out to make sure everything's okay. What has happened in the last, so this appointment, the appointment that kind of that outcome came from was three weeks ago, and in the last two weeks she started walking, so I'm considerably calmer now, which is why I'm now trying to focus on trying to get some answers for myself. But, you know, I've been putting her before me, um, and as much as you should do that as a parent, you need to look after yourself because otherwise you can't look after your child. So Edie's doing really, really well. She's become just the most, she's, she's incredible. I mean, if anyone, if, if any of you follow me on Instagram, I put stuff on there of her. I don't, I don't like sharing her on social media. But I'm so proud of her and I love her so much that I just want everyone to see her. I think because I'm on my own with her, like when you, like if she does something new for the first time, you're like, oh my God, your instinct is you just want to share and you're so proud. But I don't have anyone here with me. So I guess I kind of reached to social media for that, um, like Facebook or Instagram. In the same way that I've been trying to get some answers for my physical health problems and some help and support, I've been doing the same with my mental health. Um, Ever since I was pregnant, I've been asking for help from doctors for some psychological support. Because uh, obviously when I was pregnant, I was going through stuff with my ex-partner and I wanted support with that because, and then after having ED um, and obviously breaking up with my partner. And uh, as I mentioned at the beginning, having this continual gaslighting going on. Um, I have asked for help numerous occasions and just not happened. Um, when I was pregnant I got seen by a psychologist and they said that I wasn't fit to be a mum and all of this horrible stuff. And when Edie was born I was referred to the perinatal mental health team who were brand new, they'd literally only been up and running a few weeks and they said sorry we can't help you. Uh, so I went back to my doctor, I went on antidepressants um, which because I'm still breastfeeding it's there's only certain ones that I can take and I wanted to take, uh, I was on sertraline uh, and I stopped taking it a few weeks ago because 
it just made me feel so sick. It didn't really help enough to outweigh the uh, the cons. The pros weren't good enough to outweigh the cons, if that makes sense. I was on it for a few months, uh, for several months. I then asked for help last summer, um, and I was told by my doctor that she was referring me for counselling. Um, and also some of the physical things, oh, she was referring me to physiotherapy and all of this. I spent months on the waiting list, and then I'd call, I called um, and I asked where I was on the waiting list and they said, she hasn't referred you. Oh, okay, why not? And they said, well, there's no service that exists. There is no counsellor. I was like, so she didn't refer me to a service that didn't ex doesn't exist. And this was November, so I've been on the waiting list since July and she told me it'd be a while, which is why I didn't call sooner. Um, and that pretty much devastated me because I've been feeling like, okay, I'm struggling, but at least I'm on the waiting list. I'm gonna get some help. Um, but that wasn't the case. There's no psychological support. There's no talking therapy in the area that I'm in. The only thing there is, is changing mine. Uh, I dealt with them. I, I said, I agreed to give it a go. And it, but it, they basically, they called me and asked me a load of questions. And they said, right, you need to set a goal. And I was like, I, I don't know. And he just, he was insistent, you need to set a goal. And he said, okay, I'll set one for you. Your goal is to be less depressed. I was like, okay. So he called me back a week later. He said, how are you getting on with your goal? And I was like, nope, still depressed. And in the end, I just, I stopped that because it wasn't helpful. So I was having to, I had, like, had to go into some of my history, which obviously is opening up wounds. And just, it was just, it was just so stupid and patronizing. I've been asking for help. Nobody will give it to me. Um, again, it's something that I'm going to go back to my GP about, but because I've been focused on ED and right now I need to focus on the physical things um, because I'm in so much pain. I need some help with that. Oh, they did, um, the doctors, the only thing they said is that I could go to the domestic abuse service because a lot of my uh, mental, a lot of my like, mood issues and anxiety at the moment is around my ex-partner. Um, but... I, so I contacted them and they said they can't offer me any help. Um, I just got an email back saying, sorry, we've got no funding for any support at the moment. I was like, oh, okay, that's that's great. So yeah, I am trying to ask for help because, I mean, my mood is, you know, it's hard because I'm happy, but I'm also depressed. You know, I'm happy because I have a life with Edie that I love and I love Edie so much and I love our life together. But I have depression. It's it's not something that is, you know, if you have depression, you know, like I can get a check through for a million pounds tomorrow and I could have like Johnny Duck turn up on my doorstep and I'd be like, that's great, that's great. I'm still depressed though. My eating is stable. I have lost weight over the last year. Um, I don't weigh myself, but I know by how my clothes fit, I've lost weight. My self image is, I try not pay attention to it, to be honest. I know it's gonna fuck me up editing videos, editing these videos because uh, you know I don't like looking at my face uh, I struggle with it obviously there's a lot more that's happened in the last year um, than this I just wanted to kind of give like say hello give you a little update on what's been going on in my life um, I do have a cold at the moment which is why I sound all stuffy so sorry about that my aim is to try and make some more videos but I can't make any promises because at the moment, as I said, I'm in a lot of pain at the moment and when Edie goes to sleep, apart from now I'm filming this, normally I go to sleep. I've got so many ideas for videos, I've got so many ideas, it's really, really annoying. Um, I don't even know if this is something, if like, I'm, it sounds really sad, I don't even know if what I'm having to say is relevant anymore because, you know, from when I started my channel, I'm a completely different person and also social media and the way that people consume videos on YouTube, everything has changed. Everything has changed. So I don't know if there's, um, if what I'm saying is still wanted. Do you wanna go over there? I don't know if what I'm saying is still even wanted anymore, if there is a need for what I'm saying. Um, but I like making videos. I have a lot to say. Maybe no one will watch it, that's fine. If you have any questions about anything I've talked about in this video, about anything really, please let me know. If you have anything that you'd like me to talk more about that I've talked about in this video, like my mobility or anything, let me know. I'm more than happy to make a video on anything I've talked about to go into it further. 
Um, I am going to try and make some more videos. I'm also trying to do some music stuff at the moment, which if I get done, I will be uploading on this channel. But it's just time, time and energy. Um, so yeah, thank you very much for watching if you have. If you like more of these videos, please like this video. Subscribe if you haven't already. Here's a promise, okay? I'm going to try and upload something in the next month. By the end of February, I promise to have uploaded another video. Or try, okay? Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you again soon. Bye. Bye.